Hey, what's up guys? My name is Anthony. Uh, this is my 1992 Acura NSX. What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Build. This is a series where we sit down with fellow car enthusiasts just like Anthony here in his beautiful 1992 Acura NSX. Not only are we going to go over the modifications done to the car, but also the story behind it. Anthony, I appreciate yep. you coming out. Of course, man. Thank you for so having me. So number one question, mm -hmm. what originally got you into cars? What originally got me into cars? Huh. Like how old it were was... you? It was probably, I mean, just like with most people, I think it was around when Fast and Furious came out. Yeah. You know, it's just, I think it's pretty common with a lot of guys, you know, growing uh -huh. up as a kid, uh, maybe I was in like, maybe like early teens or something like that. Uh -huh. No, I was like probably, because he came out like what, 2001? Yeah, I was around like 10 years old, 10, 11 years old. I got into cars late. Yeah. <laughs> like I legit, I, I, I wasn't into cars at mm -hmm. all until 17, 16. Ah, uh, hey, I mean, everyone weird, has time, you know? you know? Everyone yeah. has their time. But yeah, it was mainly Fast and Furious. I remember my dad was like, hey, come watch this with me. I was like, all right. Watched it with him and I was like, dude, these cars are hella cool, you know? And then from there, I had a, you know, a car that my cousins had. It was a Matrix XRS model. It was a fun first car. Yeah. But anyways, he modded his and he knew that I was about to get into that one. Like, right, was when I got my license. So he started getting me. He's like, hey, you should do this to the car. Do that kind of car. Yeah. And I was like, all right. You know, I'm That's down. how it goes. Yeah. It just starts out small and yeah. you meet one person and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, Hell yeah. I'm broke. Like, yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Well, it's that and the combination of growing up on Legos. Like, you have this itch to want to build something. Yeah. That, you know, growing up with Legos and then getting, getting to cars and finding, you know, interest in building that together makes you automatically want to, you know, build a car. You know, yeah. something that you can modify. You know? No, yeah, that and definitely that, that definitely makes sense. That and X-Mods. X-Mods, I had it when I was a kid, too. What is X-Mods? Am I X lost? X-Mods is like a, the Radio Shack modifiable uh, RC cars. Oh. And I had an NSX as one. You know, <laughs> that is things. when you knew. Yeah, <laughs> that's when you knew. Well, I guess that that, that's a perfect transition. What originally, I guess, got you into the NSX? Was it in the Fast and Furious movie? Was it? Did you well, see it somewhere? Like, was there a moment? I think. Or was it just kind of always in the back? Like, oh, I, I like it. it. It was always in the back. I think. Um, just combination. I don't think there was an NSX in the first Fast and Furious, but that obviously sparked the interest in cars. And then I think the X Mods thing really put the NSX in my mind because like, oh, you know, I had this thing I could modify, um, and it was just always in the back of my head. And then I looked back at pictures when I was in college of my dorm. I remember I had posters of NSXs on my wall. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. That's I had so that poster good. There. And then going into high school, oh, back, backtracking to high school, I had an NSX in my, my MySpace background. And so I it think was it, was always, it was always planted there throughout my like, life growing up as a kid and going to college and all that. And eventually it just led you know, one thing after another. I don't know, should, should, should I go into the story? Yeah, of course. Okay, so in high school, you know, we all had MySpace yeah. you know, at that time. So MySpace background, I wasn't really that like, you know, I, I just wanted to find a cool car. You know, yeah. it was high school. So I Googled, you know, whatever car and an NSX, blue NSX came up. Wide body NSX show car. It was like a studio shot, you know, yeah. picture of it. So I put that in my MySpace background and then fast forward about six, seven years later, 2015, 2016, I was working with this company and the leader I was working with I found out owned that blue NSX I had on my MySpace background. Working with so him and crazy. everything. I know it was crazy. I was like, whoa, that was your NSX? Shoot, you know? And then working with him uh, about two, three years, it eventually led me into getting into the NS this NSX here. It, it, was, it definitely wasn't anything like this. It was white. Um, it was one of our business partners. He had this. It was his baby for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then he, I believe he messed up a nerve in his left leg so he couldn't drive it anymore. And that was um, the opportunity. How yeah, and then it. our boss was like, yo, hey, you should hand this off to Anthony. He'll take care of it. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'll take care of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I he gave me a crazy deal on it. And then um, at the time, it had 230,000 miles on it, which, you know, at the end of the day, it's a Honda. Yeah. You get all the records for it. And I was like, dude, what's mileage on a Honda? Might as well keep it going, you know? Yeah. So I got it off him. Um, and then, yeah, it, it, that, 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 that's where it all started. That's where the story yeah, starts. That's where it all started. And then the modifications started. come. Yeah, you know, I mean, it started off with a, a few things here and there. Luckily with mine, uh, when I bought it, it already had the 
the O2 conversion with the headlights, the hood. The because bumper. originally pop-up, right? Exactly. 992 comes with a pop-up. Mm -hmm. um, so he did the conversion on this. Um, and it was Grand Prix white before. Um, it already had BC coilovers, but it, he had it like a stock height. And he had some uh, VSXXs already on it. So I got lucky with that. Mm. Um, and then from there, uh, I drove it about 35,000 miles in a year and a half. And then the engine started knocking and actually out here on La Honda. Yeah. I, I, heard, I had that dreaded noise. I was like, you're oh. like, well, here we go. Engine knocking is uh, your wallet is starts screaming. Stuff, you're like, oh, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, that noise. I, I hope to never hear it again, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Um, I guess we could highlight just a few of your favorite modifications. Okay, favorite what mods. What are we thinking? Ooh, man, where do I start? Oh, my favorite one, like, currently is my cups, dude. The cups are game changer. Did you do it pretty recently? I did it right before I got the engine in. Oh, okay. Back in April. So, I, you know, while it was down, I got I had a bunch of parts sitting around waiting to go on. Um, a lot of the body and exterior modifications went on uh, before it got painted, you know, obviously. Yeah. Um, but after that, there were a lot of things that I did right when I had the, right before I put the engine in. One of them was the air cups. Um, the sound system was a game changer as well, too. Exactly. Um, as far as like the body modifications, mm -hmm. I know you said Type R, at least in the rear. Yep. And then you said wider front fenders up here. Yeah, these are Pride front fenders. Um, this is a downforce Type R hood, downforce front bumper. Um, the Margate side Hill skirts, side too, skirts. Right? Yeah, Margate Hill side skirts. Um, carbon stuff sprinkled around here and there. I got a, a lot of carbon in the engine bay. Yeah, there's a lot there. And um, in the interior as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's just sprinkled carbon everywhere. I mean, with the car being down for two and a half years, you, you come up on deals on the pages and everything. You know, it's just having an NSX in general, you sort of become a vulture for parts. Oh, of course. You know, anytime, you know, you get that you know, typical meme. Oh, sorry, you crashed, bro. Part yeah. Out. You know? No, yeah. Oh, no, that's, uh, it's, Part out? it's sad to say, but that's, it's right away. Yeah. Maybe give them five minutes of remorse yeah. and then... So that's you're gonna sell that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, hey, I, I see that wing's still good, right? <laughs> that's so good. Stuff like that, you know. Then then you see people uh, posting up parts that they've swapped out, and then you're giving awesome deal on it. You're like, oh, dude, let me hop on this. Yeah. You know, you got all the pages bookmarked. You know, checking every now and then. Oh, all the time. Like, what's popped up? And like, oh shit, got this, got this, uh, got this deal going on. Hell yeah, let me hop on this. So you said you own the car for what? Four years now? Yeah, since 20 May 2014. No, May 2016 is when I got it. Okay. Yeah. And I I want to I love highlighting this portion because yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't like they don't understand like they, they see you they see the car and they don't know the story behind mm -hmm, it right mm -hmm. so you were saying kind of a while ago yeah there was a point where it was in the garage it was sitting there you're like this is just a table yeah so exactly. was there a point at which you're like am i giving up on it yeah like Man. let's talk about the downs you know what i mean okay well so when it went down um i pulled the engine out sent it out and then i had started working with uh bmw back in free uh, in fremont as a service advisor and i think working at a new job knowing that hey i gotta bust my butt because i know i gotta spend some money on this thing mm -hmm. um i think me staying focused on busting my butt and working was what sort of helped me keep me out of the hole because i know it's like i know it's gonna be a lot of money i'm just gonna keep working saving the money because i know it's gonna have to pay for this unexpected rebuild mm -hmm. um knowing that it's not only the engine but the paint job and having it go through actually two engines and two paint jobs was actually the driving force you know for me to work to keep it going yeah and i i didn't feel that there was there, there was maybe a time where i'm like oh, man this is taking forever but i feel i'm kind of a patient dude yeah um that's definitely good yeah patience is patience. key if you want anything remotely close to this yeah. caliber of a build exactly patience yeah no it's not going to go the right way at least two or three times exactly <laughs> and then there was a lot of firsts with this car like i've never had a car um uh me having to go through getting a car painted mm -hmm. never had to go through having an engine built um, a lot of times it's just bolt-on stuff. Exactly. I mean, I, I had a car painted just because it, it was it was an insurance through insurance, but I never had to go through and find a painter that you know I wanted to change the color of my car. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, but having going through two engine, uh, two engines and two paint jobs in that two and a half year time span, um, just focus on work and you know and 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 making the money you know, with the fender rolling and my other business to you know keep it going to where you know I I know I can at least do the modifications to the car. Yeah. That I wanted to do without having you know money restrict me for it exactly you know so like, exactly let me do that mm -hmm. um is there any particular advice that you would give someone mm -hmm. if they wanted to build a car to this caliber i guess mainly mm. patience is what you would say. patience is is one big thing because yeah. i feel that if you build a car i mean there's also there's two things because i mean I, you, you you've you've got through building cars of like, course a lot of people have got through that 
And I think there's a thing with taking it slow, one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. I think you have more of a bigger appreciation for your car. 100%. Doing one thing at a time. Yes. Rather than just going all out, balls out, let me buy everything and put it all out at once and yeah. enjoy it at, at that stage. I've seen a lot of times where when people do that, they get bored of the car quick and they just sell it. 100%. And I, I'm like, damn, dude. Like, if you had the experience that I had with my car, I don't know. It might be a it's, different experience. No, you know? I definitely feel like, I want to even say, like, the downs, it's right after that is what it, it, what's... No one will understand the attachment to your car. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they're just going to be like, oh, it's just like, oh, it's just a car guy. But yeah. It's like, it's, it really is an emotional connection to the car. Like, Hell yeah, dude. it's ups and downs, but definitely. I feel like that's definitely what makes it kind of special. If so, makes it worth it. You know, going through his ups and downs, yeah. knowing that, you know, there are times where you're like, dude, man, is this ever going to like, am I ever going to drive my car again? Mm -hmm. You know, because there have been times like where I just walk in the garage and I see it sitting there. I'm like, dude, uh, I'm, I'm losing my memory of how I felt driving this car. Yeah. You know, I might have a couple of videos here and there, but it's not the same as, you know, you're experiencing it. Mm -hmm. And after the two and a half years of it being down, like I, uh, um, the, the experience of it, it being back on the road is, is like no other. You can't even describe it. Yeah. I can't yeah. Even describe like it once. Yeah. It's just, that's the same thing with me. Like my car was down for probably over a year mm -hmm. easily when I built the engine mm -hmm. and then getting back in it, like, you just, I was just laughing to myself, driving yeah, it. Like, hell yeah, dude. No one's ever going to understand, but it's yep. just... It's, it's that so joy good. you get into it. You know, the, it's it's not... You're not 100% happy because you're like, oh, in the back of your mind, once you first get it started, you're like, okay, I think I checked everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's awesome I'm driving my car again. Yeah, no, you know? for real. So, you're pretty big on Instagram. I'm sure you get a lot mm -hmm, of messages. Mm -hmm. So, what are, like, the three questions that you get, get like, most frequently on Instagram? Mm -hmm. So, we can answer it now so a lot of yeah. people can hmm. get their answers that they want. The, I guess the top question is my wheel specs. Mm -hmm. uh, of course. <laughs> wheel of specs course. Might, up as there. Well, might as well say it now. Yeah. So, the wheel specs I have on this, um, it's a, a Workmeister L1. Um, front is the 18 by 9.5 plus 25 A-disc. Uh, a disc is what you need to clear the stock caliper. Oh. Um, and I have a two forty five thirty five eighteen up front. The only way I, I can run that though is because I'm running Pride twenty five millimeter wider uh, front, front fenders. Um, now with the rear fenders or the rear wheels, it's a nineteen by ten and a half plus twenty five a disc as well. Um, with a two seventy five thirty nineteen, it's just stock rear fenders with you know, that are rolled. So that, that, that's it. You know. Sweet. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you um, kind of want to highlight on the car? Mm, anything in general? Well, Any last um, words? Let's see here. What else? Man, there's a lot. Oh, there's so many. Yeah, videos. dude. Uh, when it comes to having an engine built, especially for the first time, mm -hmm. don't take shortcuts. <laughs> 100%. Don't take shortcuts. Do man. it right the first time. Dude, it's, it's an expensive learning lesson. This whole car has just been a really expensive learning lesson. But of course. I, I feel it's worth it. Um, because, you know, I had the dream of always wanting to build a cool car and then mm -hmm. having the NSX to do it on is, I think, uh, very rewarding for me, at least yeah. myself. Um, but when it comes to building an engine, like, even if a specialist is, like, out of state or they're hella far... It's going to be worth spend it. Spend the money to ship it there. Because I made that mistake of wanting to stay local and not wanting to ship it And then Arizona. you're going to spend twice as much when it blows up, exactly, like, 3,000 miles later. Exactly, man. That's exactly what happened with my first engine. It lasted 150 miles. So it took them <sighs> two years. Two years to build the engine for me to put it in and last only 150 miles before it started knocking again. And I was like, are you kidding me? You know? See, it, like that, that, thing, and that, and that's the point when people are going to give up on the build. Yeah. You exactly, know what I mean? Exactly. So much money, so much time. Yeah. But then. Two years wasted, man. <laughs> two years wasted. I would have thrown up. Yeah. I, don't know. Like, I would have oh. thrown up. You know, if it was any other of my other cars, I probably would have given up. But because I had the NSX, I was like, you know what? I got to keep Got to push through. through. Got to push through it. You know, and then having, I after that happening, I was like, you know what? All right, I got to find the right guy to build this. Who's the specialist out there? I want to give a shout out to HQ Engineering down in SoCal. David there has, you know, taken very good care of me. Um, and the engine build, you know, he felt for, for my situation. He took care of me. And this guy knows his stuff, man. So, David, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> How many miles are on the edge now? The new engine, there's about five, uh, 5,500 on it now. Uh, since April, so yeah. you know, ever since I got it running in April, I've been wanting to drive the hell out of it. I'm taking it everywhere. I feel like, any, honestly, anything after a thousand, yeah. you should be good. If nothing, yep. blew, up. If nothing <laughs> blew up yet, yep, yep, exactly. So I mean, good. I had some other issues, but it was just old things. You know, the car has 270k on it. Yeah. So there was like things like starter issues, you know, uh, voltage issues with my alternator. So I'm like, all right, well, might as well change that. Might as well change the starter, the alternator. I have my AC condenser or my AC compressor to replace next. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Yeah. You know, so.
So, um, as far as the future of the build, anything mm. in the near future, anything future. like end goal? This is what I want it to look like, or we're already there. <sighs> I don't know. I, th I think it's never I don't ending. Know. What else do you add? You yeah, know? it's never. It's ending, always small you know? things. It's a bunch of small stuff, you know, fixing things here and there. Yeah. Um, I know eventually my the windshield is. I could tell it's really old because mm -hmm. it's pitted. It's oh, okay. hella pitted. And I eventually probably want to replace that just to get it like looking like nice and clear again. Yeah. Um, there, you know, it's a 30 year old car. There's small things here and there that are aged. Like there's some trim that is like really old. Yeah. That I want to switch out. Um, but other than that, but nothing I did the, big, nothing major, nothing major no wide body. No, I mean, none of that. There is Maybe. a sorcery wide body that, that I, that's like the end goal, but I think that's just too crazy of a, that's like time attack, like crazy Sukuba time attack. I like gotta look that thing up. I haven't cars. seen that. Dude, it's kind of nuts, man. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a few photos. Yeah. But those wide bodies are freaking nuts. Like it's, I mean, I mean, stock seen? body. I love it. Yeah, no stock body is awesome. And I feel like if I did go that far, it wouldn't be a car I drive much anymore. And I want to drive the my thing. car. That, there, there's a level, there's a level that I, cause I feel like honestly, if I could do, I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah. If I could do my car over again, yeah. I think I would say stock body. Mm. I'm going to, I'm going to upset some yeah. people, <laughs> but it's like, yeah. okay, I love the way it looks. Yeah. It looks awesome, mm -hmm. but it's like, Number one, okay, I'm scared to drive it yeah. everywhere, you mm -hmm. know? But I mean, whatever, like you put a lot of money into a car, yeah. you're scared to drive it. Hell yeah. But even like, you know, going around turns, like, especially if you wide body a four door, mm -hmm. you're gonna rub. Ah, it's gonna true, rub. True. Mm -hmm. I rub in the rear. So it's yeah. like, I don't know, two door might be different, mm -hmm. but. I think I yeah, you got a little more fender, whereas, whereas with a four door, you got much fendered where the door is. That's right? what I'm saying, like it's gonna hit right on the door, so. It only cuts so know. much. That's what I'm saying. Dang, but yeah, I mean, it's. If I want to, I mean, I'm pretty satisfied with where everything's at. I yeah. mean, maybe upgrade a few things here and there later um, as things age. But, but just enjoying it now. Yeah, just enjoy it now because I, I got to make up on those two and a half years that it was down, you know? You got to keep going. You got trips planned. Yeah. You got oh, all yeah. kinds of stuff. Hell yeah. I'm going to give, I guess, guess give, yeah, give, 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 give a huge shout out to um, David HQ Engineering um, for helping me with the engine build, getting me back up on the road. I want to. We really huge, appreciate you. Yeah, I want to give a huge shout out to Lynn with Garage Works who painted the car who, you know, both David and Lynn rescued the car from yeah. a bad paint job and a bad engine. So I can definitely give them a you know, huge thanks. Yeah. Um, give a, a huge thanks to uh, uh, my mentors, Duke, Sheila, um, uh, Becky and James, who were the ones who helped me actually get into this in the first uh, first time. Um, definitely huge thanks to those guys because you know, I learned a lot to help me grow as a person and, yeah. and help me get into this. Um, and no, especially my girlfriend. My girlfriend's been patient with me this whole time with this entire build because she knows it has my attention uh -huh. all the time. Hundred percent. And, and I, I know it can be daunting for you know uh, all all the significant others out there, especially going through a, like something like this mm -hmm. where it's like stressful. Of course. You know, for you know they're the guy, along for the ride. You know, <laughs> along for the ride. And it's like hey, you gotta sign up for this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, definitely huge thanks to my girlfriend. Um, She's been with me throughout the whole build and supported me. She even helped me out on a few things on, on, on this, so I definitely love, love love her for that. But this is a great story. Yeah. I might cry a little bit. <laughs> like, this is fantastic. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, 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 it's been a really crazy journey. I, I would have never thought that a build would have had this much this, impact. Yeah, this much impact and been this much of a roller coaster because there's been really big highs, really big low, uh, really low lows. Mm -hmm. um, but finally, about having me back on the road and being able to go on a road trip like I'm about to do in a couple of weeks. It's yeah. going to be really cool, you know? It's freaking perfect. It's to really enjoy it, so. Yeah, it's been awesome. Well, I appreciate you uh, <laughs> sharing the story. Of course, I think yeah, everyone else did as well. You can yeah. definitely check him out. Mm -hmm. This is Anthony here, or AKA The Rub Doctor. Yeah, The Rub Doctor no on Instagram. No underscores. Yeah, no, The Rub Doctor on Instagram. Easy peasy. Yep. Do you actually rub fenders, or oh. not rub fenders, roll well, fenders? Yeah, so I, I've been rolling fenders for the, about the past 10 years um, okay. throughout the Bay Area. I'm actually going to be doing a good handful of cars in Oregon. Uh, my good buddy Jamie, uh, he's like my big brother to me. Um, yeah. I'm going up there to visit him um, and go to a drift event with him. Obviously, he's going to sit in the parking lot. But yeah. I'm going to enjoy you know, sitting passenger seat and stuff. Sweet. Um, but he has a few cars lined up for me out there. Um, I know he's working with a shop that he's working with where I can you know work out of. Sweet. Gather a bunch more cars. So it looks pretty promising. I'm probably going to be there up there for a week, just banging out cars, enjoying Oregon, maybe drive to Seattle. Can people hit um, you up just through your Instagram? Yeah, no, doctor? people hit me up on my Instagram. My, my number's on there too, but DM me. Um, I'll eventually get back to you. <laughs> yeah, that, I know yeah I got, that's how it goes. I, I have to filter through them. It's like, yeah. okay, this guy's hitting me up for a fender roll. Okay, let me yeah. hit him up, you know, ask, uh, respond to them yeah. in a scheduled time. Um, I know I'm not sure when this uh, video is going up, but throughout August, I'll be out of town. So, I mean, I'll be in Oregon and SoCal in August. So I guess you can still message me yeah. if you're in those areas and I can, you know, 
probably you know take care of those for you at the time. Sweet, sounds yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Well, for sure, check him out. Uh, continue following his build, as I'm sure uh, everyone's going yeah. to want to. So, <laughs> I think that's going to be it. I really mm -hmm. appreciate you coming out. No, thank you, thanks, Alex. Really appreciate it. And to mm -hmm. the behind the build episode two, we're going to catch you guys on the next one. Latest. <laughs> wow.